Hello everyone and welcome to Callie's Corner on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie and in this video I'm going to be talking about some of my top picks for fantasy board games. When I am choosing a book to read or a game to play, fantasy is my go-to topic. I just love exploring fantastical worlds with magic, creatures, heroes and villains, even twists on history, basically worlds where anything is possible. I'm going to try to show a variety of games as far as categories and weight of the game go. If you have no idea what I mean by weight, that's okay. Go ahead and check out my board games categories video. That'll kind of get you up to speed on some of the different board game terminology out there and sort of some of the terms and jargon we use to categorize games. I will link that video in the description below as well as links to where you can find all of these games. Some of those links will be affiliate links. Thank you so much for supporting Unfiltered Gamer. First up, we'll start with this small game here, Welcome to the Dungeon. I wanted to start with something really small, easy to play and learn, and really accessible. What I love about Welcome to the Dungeon as well is you can actually use it to help introduce other players to some of the fantasy genres that are out there, including the different kind of character archetypes such as warrior, mage, rogue, and barbarian, and some of the creature archetypes as well. It's a card game. It's under 30 minutes to play for two to four players. It comes in, like I said, a small box, very easy to travel with and take around for game nights as well, which makes it a great affordable choice. And it's why it's also in my affordable board games video, which I recently did. You can check that one out in the description description below as well. Next, I want to talk about Frontier Enchanted Land, and I'm really liking this game right now. It is also a pretty short game at around 30 minutes. It is a card drafting and tableau building game where at the end of the game, you end up with a your very own fantasy town full of maybe a menagerie of creatures or stone huts for a bunch of witches and all kinds of different little shops and towns that kind of interact and, and build upon each other and combo in order to get uh, the highest point. The art is beautiful in this game, as you can see on the cover, and the cards also have that really fantastic fantastical element to them, sort of more traditional fantasy style. And there's a really cute little dragon meeple in the game, which is used to track the rounds of the game. As far as the gameplay, first there are drafting rounds where you're choosing the cards that you'll want to build your town with. And then there'll be building rounds where you're laying out resources and using those to play your different buildings and try to combo them and develop a, a really well-developed town. I like that at the end of the game, you have something visually, you can see your little fantasy town in front of you. Down here, we have Quacks of Quedlinburg in which you are a potioneer, pulling ingredients from your bag, trying to create your potions and push your luck in order to create more and more complex potions and get the right combination of actions that you'll want to succeed. It is still a pretty short game at about 45 minutes for two to four players. There's also some expansions you can use to add in different types of fantastical ingredients that do different things when you use them, as well as uh, even an additional player to the game. What I really like about Quacks is it has a more sort of fun, cartoony feel to the art, and that is reflected in the game as well. Um, sort of pushing your luck and trying to outdo one another in the potion making business. Moving along, we have Call to Adventure, which is almost like a role playing experience in a board game. You're playing as a singular hero and you are sort of following your hero throughout their hero's journey as a hero or maybe an anti-hero. And you're building up your skills, meeting different challenges, either choosing which path you want to take each time and gathering runes that you use to accomplish these challenges. And at the end, you have a story of how your character has sort of 
gone through different trials and challenges and where they ended up at the end. Call to Adventure is for one to four players and still takes under an hour to play. It does have a lot more stuff in the game, but it's still relatively easy to pick up and, and learn and play. And it's sort of fun to see the journey that your hero goes on at the end of the game, as well as you can really embrace that role playing aspect and, and get into the character and the story more if you want to, or you can play it more as a strategy type game. Just whatever adventure you choose. And next we have Everdell, which takes place in this fantasy woodland area with all of these little critter characters that have different jobs. Similar to Frontier Enchanted Land, you are kind of building your own town as you go along, but there's more involved as far as worker placement, placing your little critters in order to gather resources, spending those resources to build a different um, little buildings for your town as well as attract other critters to come and join your town. Everdell has beautiful, beautiful artwork by Andrew Bosley and there's so many cards with lots of great fantastical art on them, really cute critters, the meeples as well, little are different little wooden creatures that you get to play. You really get to become a part of this fantasy land with this uh, cardboard tree structure that you're going to be taking your critters from as well. It is a lot of fun, a little more involved than some of the other games, especially as far as the setup of the game goes, just because there's a lot of stuff. But once you get into it and playing, it is a lot of fun and, and easy to pick up and understand. It does take a little bit longer to play and It'll depend as well on which expansions you're playing with as well. I'll link down below some of the different videos we have about those expansions and which ones you should pick up. And finally, this massive game over here is Caverna. Caverna is a bit of a meteor game where you are playing as a dwarf community and you get to choose what you want to do in your dwarf community. It's a worker placement and tableau building game where you can choose anything in this fantasy world such as clearing the woodland and farming or taking care of animals. You can build out your cave systems and populate your caves or you can send your dwarves out on adventures and see what they find out in the world. What I like about Caverna is because it is a little bit of a meteor game you really get to kind of dive into the world and explore and do what you want to do in that world and it plays up to seven players but it will be about 30 minutes of gameplay per player that you add on so just be aware of that it can take a little while but you get to at the end of it you have your own little dwarven community and you can see what you've accomplished also if you like the fantasy theme as much as i do please check out my upcoming game moonshell a mermaid game there's surprisingly not a lot of mermaid games out there. I'm excited to bring different mermaid myths from around the world to life in the characters. So if you're interested, please check out that link in the description below and sign up for updates. I hope some of these games interested you. If so, you can check out the links on where to find these games in the description below. Thank you for supporting Unfiltered Gamer. Those affiliate link goes to supporting giveaways through our site. And speaking of giveaways, I'm doing one right now for Callie's Corner and it includes two small fantasy games. It includes uh, Siege, Castle of Kings and Archmage Origins will be part of the four game prize pack that you can win on unfilteredgamer.com. Just share out this video even if you want and then go click the link in the description. You'll have already done the first entry and you can submit that right away. And while you're here, be sure to click that like button, click the subscribe button and notification bell. That will ensure you get to see all of the Callie's Corner videos as well as our other review and top videos as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Callie signing off and I look forward to seeing you next time.